Welcome to the Lumix Shootout. The Contenders. The new kid in town, the Lumix GH6. The oldie but a goodie, the Lumix GH5. The full frame beast, the Lumix S5. And the pocket rocket, the Lumix G100. I'll leave the last one out. So we have five grueling rounds for these cameras and it's a head-to-head -head shootout. And each round will get one point and then we'll crown a winner at the end. So without further ado, round one, low light video. Let the games begin. Pew, pew, pew. So here is a selection of ISOs over all three cameras and I'm just filtering through them now and you can see clearly that the GH6 is doing brilliantly. 12,800 ISO, whereas the GH5 is struggling with a lot of colour noise in the shadows. The S5 is doing really well, but I'm so, so impressed with 12,800 ISO on the GH6. And here's some side-by-side -side comparisons. I think the S5 is so sharp and clean and, and really the full frame goodness obviously comes into play. But I think the GH6 is doing remarkably well as well. So for the low light, I'm going to give the point to the Lumix S5, but I do think the GH6 is blooming brilliant and a huge improvement over the GH5. Round two, autofocus and burst mode. So this is more art than science, I'll be the first to admit. The roles are all slightly different, but I tried to keep consistency. The GH6 is up first, which offers 9 frames per second, just like the GH5, and it tracked things really well. Just to clarify, according to the spec, we have 9 frames per second with continuous autofocus mode and 75 frames a second with fixed autofocus, but that won't track a subject. Here's a second attempt, and it tracks very well, and we get right to the very end of the tape before the focus shifts. Really impressive when you consider this was indoors and pretty low light as well. Very impressive with the GH6. Let's have a look at the GH5. This one also really impressed me. I think I was expecting a lot worse given that it's slightly older, but it absolutely kicked butt. Not quite as good as the GH6 because we do have the extra processing power, but I think the GH5 did admirably. Now on to the S5. The S5 has much less impressive specs in this arena, so I don't expect it to do amazingly, and it really didn't, unfortunately. But this isn't the strength of this camera by any means. Its strengths lie elsewhere. So I'm giving the points to the Lumix GH6. Round three, low light photography. This one's a big one, very eye-opening. Let's start with ISO 2500. So the GH5, lots of color noise at 2500. The GH6 at 2500 in exactly the same settings has done phenomenally well. And then the S5 is looking absolutely delightful at 2500. 6400. The GH5, lots of color noise again. The GH6, super duper clear really really clear and then the s5 with its iso invariance you'll probably see very little difference between all of these settings to be honest there's a little bit of color noise but it's not too bad and there's no sharpening or anything added this is the gh6 at 12800 iso what the hell we have tons and tons of noise on the gh5 as you would expect and that's the gh6 that's the S5 at 12,800, and that's the GH6. You can argue that the processing on the GH6 does make things look ever so slightly softer, but there is not a world of difference. There is really not a world of difference between the GH6 and the S5. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments which would you crown the winner. I'm going to have to give the S5 and the GH6 a point each, I think. Round four, my personal favourite long exposures handheld. Let's have a shootout. So in this round of our shootout, pew, 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 we're gonna test out the in-body stabilization of all the cameras by doing some handheld long exposures and getting some light trails of the traffic. The first one up is the Lumix GH6 and I'm going for a one second exposure. We start in big. 
And just a little tip if you want to try this yourself, stick your two second timer on so that you don't move the camera when you press the shutter button. I'm just waiting for the cars to come closer. That's so good. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Okay, let's push it out. Let's go. Two seconds. And I'm not leaning on anything. That would be cheating. Okay, I can't really tell on the screen just yet if that's worked. So let's just go ham and go straight to four seconds. I don't think the four second one's gonna be working. I'm gonna be very impressed if it does. And it's super duper windy as well. I can feel myself <laughs> rocking. This is the GH6. And as you can see, just not a single issue handheld at one second. This is the S5. Did struggle ever so slightly. I took a few tests of each as, as I'll show in a little minute and this was probably the clearest one I could get so it's not the greatest. The GH5 did great and there we go one second GH5 very very clear. GH6 again crystal clear two seconds at the top. The S5 got a little bit more wobbly and the GH5 is usable just about, but if you start pixel peeping, it does look a little bit soft. And then let's move on to the four second exposures. The GH6, how impressive is that? We've got a little bit of wobble on the very, very edges. But aside from that, perfect. Then we've got the S5 at four seconds. And I really tried to get this as close as possible. I took several attempts to get this and this was about as good as I could get. The GH5, that was my first attempt. I just thought I'd show you for a laugh. It was very windy. And then the GH5, the best attempt I could get is this one. So still quite blurry. And then you compare that to the GH6, absolutely crazy. So I think in the long exposure handheld test, the GH6 has to take the point. And round five, autofocus for video. For this round, we have the autofocus slalom race. Who will snap to the subjects first? Place your bets now. First up, the GH5 with a surprisingly snappy performance. Very impressive. But then the S5, lots of rolling shutter and a little bit slower to find the subjects especially the broccoli yes the broccoli is always a challenge emily but then the gh6 not a single issue nice and snappy and locks on here's the gh5 and the gh6 they are absolutely neck and neck and because it was so close here is a rolling shutter comparison where the gh6 really shines so one point to gh6 for this round though i was very impressed with the gh5 Ooh. So it's time to crown the winner. With a landslide victory, the winner is the Lumix G100. I do think it's an adorable camera, honestly. So in truth, I guess it's neck and neck between the Lumix GH6 and the S5. And it all comes down to whether you want some full framey goodness, whether you would like more compact lenses, whether you want more feature rich video, better stabilization, all that shallow depth of field that we all know and love. Choices, choices, choices. Let me know in the comments which you think did best. To learn more about the GH6, watch this video next, you'll love it.